recording and clipping. Welcome to Just Curious Media. This is Let's Talk Movies, and I'm Jason Connell. On the show today, I'm talking about Air 2023 Just Watched. I know I recently did an episode on the trailer as I was getting myself psyched up about the movie. Let me just tell you, I went and saw it this week, and I was not disappointed. I was blown away, more like it. Let me put the poster on just to get into things here. And the poster does say, some icons are meant to fly air, courting of a legend. And that's exactly what happens. As uh, I talked about before, but I'll reinstate here, the movie came out April 5th, 2023. The synopsis is, follows the history of shoe salesman Sonny Vaccaro and how he led Nike in its pursuit of the greatest athlete in, in the history of basketball, Michael Jordan. That's right, MJ, Air Jordan, the greatness. And I didn't know the story of Sonny Vaccaro, but I did know the story of Michael Jordan. Chicago Bulls, two three-peat champ, Coach Phil Jackson, second fiddle, Scottie Pippen. Incredible run. I've actually read two books about Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, The Life, and The Jordan Rules, The Inside Story of a Turbulent Season with Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. That one was much older and took some shots at Jordan and how he pushed his teammates to be great, but it paid off. And The Life came out much later. Uh, I really enjoyed it, kind of a biography on on Jordan himself, but I learned a lot. So I knew some of these things, but I hadn't seen it played out this way. I just didn't know of Sonny. So in 1984, Sonny Vaccaro, played by Matt Damon, convinced Nike to sign a $15 million five-year contract with Michael Jordan. And it sounds easy now. Nike, of course, they're all in basketball and all these things. But at the time, they were fledgling. They were losing out in basketball to Adidas and Converse. And Michael Jordan loved Adidas. He was going to sign with Adidas. They'd recently lost their founder. He passed away. It was run by a family. And it was, an un, it was unclear who was really in charge. And that comes into play in the movie. The movie represents that so well. It shows you that meeting, the meeting at Converse. Converse at the time had, you know, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Dr. J, Julius Irving. So it was like, okay, you'll go there. You'll be fourth fiddle there. You know, you'll be amongst these stars. And it was really about playing up to what Michael Jordan could be in the NBA. Keep in mind, he wasn't even in the NBA yet. So here he is, this, you know, soon to be rookie. But Sonny Vaccaro was always looking out for talent. Missed on some, but this one he was right on. And then he had to convince everybody at Nike all the way up to do this. And this movie is really about that. And let's go behind the scenes, if you will. Directed by... Ben Affleck. He plays Phil Knight as well. So he's acting, directing, who is the founder of Nike. And I've always liked Affleck as a director. I mean, Argo, Best Picture, The Town, Gone Baby Gone. And I will hope to see more. This is such a great sports biopic. I'd love to see Affleck try another one or any biopic for that matter. But he's also an actor. And he's been in lots of great movies, but I just highlighted the ones he's been in with Matt Damon. You know, buddies from way back when, they met in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which I'm a little close to now, having lived in the Massachusetts area for a year. Would play soccer at Cambridge, went and played at Harvard sometimes and they're on the practice fields there. But I've recently moved to Rhode Island, but so, you know, I've I've taken those little tours where Goodwill Hunting was filmed and all that. So I feel a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a degree away. But here's some movies that the two of them have been in together. Starting with most recent to the first. The Last Duel. Fantastic movie by Ridley Scott. Highly recommend that. Jay and Silent Bob Reload. Re, sorry. Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Dogma. Chasing Amy. Great Kevin Smith film. Uh, so are the other ones, but that was my favorite at the time. School Ties, an incredible movie. I used to live by the school from School Ties, which is in Concord, Massachusetts. Goodwill Hunting, where they both also won Oscars for writing the screenplay. Field of Dreams, 
Were they in Field of Dreams? They were both extras. And having made a documentary, a documentary about movie extras, strictly background, I'm a partial to that. If I ever speak with them, that's something we'll talk about. Uh, the writer, Alex Convery, no other credits on IMDb, so comes out of the gate with this great script. Cinematographer, Robert Richardson. I have mentioned him before on Let's Talk Movies, and here's why. This guy works with Tarantino uh, so many times. He's worked with Scorsese. He's worked with Oliver Stone. But here's a few movies. Just see if you've heard of any of these. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Django Unchained, Ungl Inglorious Bastards, Kill Bill Volume 1 and Volume 2, Casino, Natural Born Killers, A Few Good Men, JFK, Wall Street, Platoon, and so, so many more. Incredibly talented. And it looks the part. This movie really captures the era. But I'm going to keep going through the hit list of players, and then we'll talk about my takeaways. But the cast, again, Matt Damon, Sonny Vaccaro, marketing exec at Nike, recruiting athletes to sign. Um, you've seen him in so many movies, all the ones I just named, and a few more that I mentioned in the last episode. But The Martian, The Departed, The Born Identity, The Talented Mr. Ripley, Rounders, Saving Private Ryan. This guy picks great movies. He's a, he's a movie star, an incredible one at that. Then there's also Jason Bateman. He plays Rob Strasser, and he's the director of marketing at Nike. Kind of over Damon, you know, pushing him to go get people, and he's over the budget and everything like that. He's fantastic. Bateman's just so lovable. I love him from so many things from my youth, when he would pop up on Silver Spoons, or uh, there's another movie that or show that he was on after that, uh, It's Your Move, I believe. But... Going more, more recently, Ozark. Oh, my gosh. Incredible. I might have to do the whole watch again. Arrested Development, Horrible Bosses, Up in the Air, Juno, and so many more. He even directs. So Dirty Words is a movie I saw that I really enjoyed. Or was it called Bad Words? But whatever. Uh, Chris Messina plays David Falk, who's Jordan's uh, uh, agent. Who's Jordan's agent. And he is incredible in this movie. He's also in Argo and so many other movies. But... He brings such a humor to the movie. I got to tell you, I didn't expect it, but that that's needed. And how he and how Falk and Vaccaro would battle because, you know, Vaccaro's going off script. He's showing up at the Jordan's home to say, hey, you know, I, I represent Nike and here's why you should listen to us. And of course, going around the agent is like, you know, nothing that you do in this space. And uh, there's a, a lot of good rapport, uh, some funny dialogue between them. Chris Tucker. Great to see Chris Tucker. He plays Howard White. He also works for Nike. He actually became real life friends with Michael Jordan forever. I think they're still friends to this day. Of course, you remember him from Friday, many Fridays, uh, the Rush Hour, the Rush Hour trilogy, Jackie Brown, so many more. He kind of took a break for a while, but now he's back and probably to taking on roles that he really wants to do. Uh, and then I didn't know if we'd see the young actor Damien Delano Young as Michael Jordan? Well, you really don't, spoiler alert. You get more of a silhouette, a handshake here, but the likeness, no one's going to be Michael Jordan. So he represents Michael Jordan, but we really learn and see Michael Jordan through archive footage, which is how I thought they might take it, and I'm glad they did. Um, interesting tidbit I learned was Michael Jordan was not directly involved in the movie, but Ben Affleck consulted him numerous times to get details on how to accu accurately portray, portray the story. Now, according to Affleck, Jordan's only two requests were that Viola Davis play his mother and that, it, and that his longtime friend Howard White be included in the film. So, I skipped her on purpose because Viola Davis does play Dolores Jordan, Michael Jordan's mother, and she's unbelievable. Unbelievable. The gravitas of her performance. She is already a four-time Oscar-nominated actress. This should be five. No joke. Five. And I hope that she is and wins. She has won previously for The Fences. Or for Fences. Uh, she was also nominated for The Woman King, The Help, and Doubt. And just amazing the father's great too and there's a lot of likeness there between him and you know him and the real michael jordan uh, 
sorry, excuse me, him and Michael Jordan's father, who was unfortunately murdered many years ago. It's quite sad. And uh, you get to know him a little. He's, you know, very warm and, um, you know, inviting. He's got a great smile. But you could tell who was running things in the Jordan household. Dolores ran things. She's very smart. She knows how she knows how special MJ, her son, is. And she's protecting that. And it's just it's beautiful. It really is. Damon, of course, kills it. And uh, I loved um, I got to say, I thought the portrayal of Phil Knight was pretty funny. I didn't know, you know, too much about him other than what I've other than what I've read or seen on TV. But he's a little quirky, you know, and, you know, he, he built something out of nothing and became a billionaire in his own right. But, uh, yeah, there's some funny uh, comedic moments with him as well. But Affleck really put this thing together A-plus all the way. I hope this movie continues to reach wide audiences. Everybody should see this. I, was, uh, I went in with an expectation, and like I said earlier, it exceeded it. I mean, the movie not just captures the era through visuals, but it does it through iconic music. I mean, this thing, I'm going to rattle off some of the soundtrack here. I don't even, I don't know what I will, I'm not sure what will be on the eventual soundtrack, the one that's released, because there's so many songs. It's like Vanilla Sky. There's a, there's a needle drop every so often. But in the trailer and in the movie, you have Night Ranger's Sister Christian. Okay, so, so good. But you have Dire Straits, Money for Nothing, uh, Billy Squire, The Stroke, uh, some violent flint. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Violent Femmes, Blister in the Sun. I'm just, I'm just scrolling down. Of course, Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA. And they were really getting the time right. You know, this is all like 84. So these things are, you know, coming out. They're, t they're talking about things like, hey, did you hear that new song? Uh, the Clash, Rock the Casbah, Run DMC, My Adidas. Love it. So I'm like dancing <laughs> in my seat, loving it. Thinking, my God, this is incredible. Squeeze, tempted, uh, Cindy Lauper, time after time. And then I have to say, they took a track from another movie that I love. And this might be one of my favorite tracks of all time. Tangerine Dream, Love on a Real Train from the Risky Business soundtrack. Yes, I started hearing that play. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then they took more Tangerine Dreams tracks from other movies. So... Really, you could just be on Spotify going down a, a deep, deep uh, rabbit hole with that incredible soundtrack. But beyond that, I mean, I laughed out loud more than a few times. I got emotional at other, at, at other parts in the movie because even though you know what happens, it's to see the underdog because the underdog truly was Nike going up against Adidas and Converse and how they put it all on the line had they failed and been wrong about MJ. There's no basketball division at Nike, right? There's no uh, endorsement deals like we have now. It, someone else would have done them and maybe they would have evolved, sure, but it wouldn't have been as we know. And also to see the belief that Vaccaro has in a young Jordan and shared belief with Dolores about how special he is, and to know that he's right, right? That just warms your heart. I was the biggest Jordan fan. I went up and down in emotions when he couldn't get over the Knicks. You know, they just kept banging him and making him pay when he came inside and, and tried to score. And then they had to develop the team. They had to get Phil Jackson and build it the right way. And MJ really got his jumper going. It wasn't just about taking it in, taking it in and dunking. And then he became Defensive Player of the Year. And so I just saw all that growth. And then when he stepped away after his father's death and played baseball, and then he comes out of retirement, and then he goes on another run. It's, it was just, you couldn't have written, written it any better in real life, but it happened. And then this movie captures before it all happened. So I am the target audience, but I'm sure I'm not alone. I'm sure there's millions and millions of others that will enjoy this ride. Um, so I could sing its praises all day long. I'd love to get someone from this movie, Affleck, Damon, anybody, just to talk more about it. But uh, without further ado, please enjoy Air. 
So thank you so much for listening, and please be sure to subscribe to the Let's Talk Movies podcast and the Let's Talk Movies YouTube live channel. You can also really help us by giving the show a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. And for all you listeners that enjoy sharing your thoughts, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcast, send us a direct message, or post a comment on any Let's Talk Movies social media platform. We also highly recommend checking out our other podcast and visiting justcuriousmedia.com.